And welcome once again to Mr. Marcos Mejia, who is a representative from the county of Sonoma. Um, welcome. What information do you have for us today? Well, uh, we continue to uh, uh, make advances in vaccination. It's a small but sustained amount of daily vaccinations this week. However, uh, we are over 1,011,000 doses applied with 81% uh, of the uh, eligible population fully vaccinated, 7% partially vaccinated, and 12% not vaccinated yet. When we break this number for age groups, uh, the group 5 to 11 is uh, now at 40% fully vaccinated. Uh, with 8% fully vaccinated and still at 53% non-vaccinated. This group is more than 37,000 kids. So we're uh, approaching um, half of the group with at least one dose, but still a lot, of, a, a lot of progress needs to be done here. When I get to the numbers and school, you will see why. The, the students are still having a hard time getting COVID infections. Then when we look at, uh, at boosters, now we are at 64.2% of the eligible population has uh, already uh, taken their boosters. Um, and then the comparison here with uh, ethnic groups, uh, while the white population is almost at 71% of uh, receiving their boosters, our Latinx population is only at 49.3%. And that's one reason why we keep doing uh, interviews like these and outreach and, 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 and clinics to bring vaccinations and boosters to the populations that are more adversely impacted like the Latino population. We will continue to focus on boosters and vaccinations because of the outcomes of the vaccination status. For this week, the unvaccinated people are 2.5 uh, uh, times more likely to be infected, 15.3 times more likely to be hospitalized, and 10.9% more likely to die. When we look at the testings uh, for COVID, we continue on a downward trend in numbers of uh, testing uh, approaching, well, no, uh, over 3,500 rapid tests that are not being reported yet. Uh, and we continue to ask people that are doing the rapid test or uh, antigen test to please call us uh, to 707-565-4701. Uh, where they can report uh, their result. Um, then uh, when we see at uh, the impact of COVID in the last 60 days, uh, we see that the uh, younger people continue to, to have more of the impact of uh, COVID infections. Uh, the most affected group is uh, precisely our, our younger group, five to 17, younger group in terms of eligibility with 22% of the cases, followed by 18 to 24 with 11% of the cases too, and the group 25 to 34 years of age with 17% of the cases. Um, when we look at the impact in the last two months uh, by ethnicity, uh, whites and Latinos are sharing 46% of the cases. However, the, the white population is 62.7% of the general population of the county whereas Latinos are only 27.3%, and it continues to be one of the most impacted groups, unfortunately. Hospitalizations also have a, a downward trend, which is great news. Only 18 persons hospitalized this week, uh, with four of them in the ICU beds. And then when we look at the cases in the schools, that number continues soaring. Uh, uh, the total number that we have since uh, the schools uh, reopened uh, um, in August last year is 4,509 cases. Uh, the larger number is for the students with 4,181 and the staff uh, 328 cases. When we look at these students by ethnicity, uh, the, uh, the white population has uh, more cases with 54% and Latinos have 35.6%. And although it sounds less, both numbers are wrong. <laughs> they, they, it shouldn't be happening. So we need to take um, yeah, continue uh, vaccinating. Uh, masks are not used now in, uh, officially, but it's a strong recommendation. And also each school district has their own, uh, their own needs. For instance, uh, Rosland, uh, the Rosland district will continue to use masks, well, I'm told, they will continue to do that. And that is because in, in, for, they have a lot of Latino students in, the, in these districts. 
and the numbers are, are great there. And the, this is a population that continues to be impacted. In other areas where there are lesser numbers, probably they will remove uh, the masks. So this is, uh, we have to look at this uh, uh, district by district. We're also going to be promoting more vaccinations through a different strategy. It's a, it's a video contest for youth. Uh, six to 12 graders will be participating in this contest. Um, uh, to promote vaccination, so the message comes directly for for the same age group, not for mm -hmm. not from adults to to kids. Um, on the other hand, today marks the two year anniversary of the pandemic, and um, uh, this is in 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 remembrance of uh, the health order that Dr. Sundari Mays, our our health official uh, official issued. Uh, for the first shelter in place on March 17, exactly two years ago, March 17, 2020. In a press release, the County Department of Health Services thanked the county's many partners, including local hospitals and federal qualified health centers, home health medical teams, community-based organizations, the Sonoma County Medical Associations, education leaders, promotores, and volunteers uh, like you, Rafael, who uh, have worked tirelessly for the past two years to educate and vaccinate the public. Thank you to all of you. Uh, the, the chair of the Board of Supervisors, uh, uh, Supervisor James Gore, uh, recorded a video this week. Um, we have it in English and Spanish on our, on our YouTube channel, also in our Facebook page, where you can watch his uh, precisely talking, um, expressing his gratitude for all the people that has really worked hard uh, to make these numbers like 81% 80, of the population uh, fully vaccinated possible. We are, um, I didn't mention it in the, in the Spanish version, but uh, it's never too late. Uh, with this uh, advances in, in vaccination that we have, we have the 10th uh, vaccination rate in California. And let's uh, keep in mind that there are 58 counties in, in, our, in our state of California. So we're in number 10 and uh, we could be better if, if a, lot, um, a lot more people help us to get there uh, to vaccinate. And finally, I want to talk to you about the, the expanded supplemental basic leave for COVID-19. Uh, we have discussed that in earlier programs, but now it's official. People can benefit from that. Uh, and this is uh, filling up the gap of the last uh, legislation that ended in September 30 last year. So it's, it's, it's back and working. Mm -hmm. Um, and the 22 supplemental basic leave applies for workers at business with more than 25 employees. And an employer uh, must provide a COVID-19 supplemental uh, basic, basic leave to each cover employee if the cover employee is unable to work or telework uh, due to any of the following reasons. Um, the covered employee is subject to a quarantine or isolation period related to COVID-19. The covered employee have been advised by a healthcare provider to isolate or quarantine, or uh, this person is attending an appointment for themselves or for a family member to receive a vaccine or a vaccine booster. Um, and then also if the covered employee is experiencing symptoms or caring for a family member experiencing symptoms related to COVID or, or a vaccine or vaccine booster that prevents the employee from being able to work or telework. Another reason is because this uh, covert employee is experiencing symptoms and, and is seeking a medical diagnosis. It's, it's, you know, from, from the earliest stages, through the symptoms, through the vaccination, through the booster, for the employee, him or herself, or a family member, for instance, parents that need to take care of the, their kids, including when, when the kids are sent back from school because uh, there's a... Uh, um, a case in the classroom and they, they are sent back home. So um, it's, 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 uh, it's up and running so people can take advantage of this and, and, and continue uh, to take care of themselves and to uh, not lose their salary. Definitely. And again, it's, it's really important for people to remember that in some of the schools, as you mentioned, the masks are no longer mandated. Please check with your schools. I saw, I was at uh, Hillsburg High School this morning and it was interesting because some of the administrators were not wearing masks and I was a little bit confused. And then somebody approached me and told me that masks were no longer required. I of course was wearing my mask 
Um, I, you know, especially when you report that a lot of students are still not vaccinated, I'm not ready to take the risk. Um, but then at some point, it was interesting to also see that a kid was just arriving to school at 8.30 in the morning. And the first thing he went to the administration office and asked for a mask. And then when I visited four classrooms today, um, the majority of the kids were wearing masks. And so it's interesting. They have chosen to do this and administrators were overheard by myself. I, I overheard them speaking and saying, it is important that they support children that choose to wear masks and that there should be no shaming for them cho choosing to do so. And as you and I have discussed this many times, sometimes these kids have mom, dad, grandma or grandpa who may be ill at home. And so they understand that they need to protect themselves. And with that, as always, I wanna thank you for taking the time and being with us. And uh, hopefully things keep moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, there's always a chance that another surge may happen with another, you know, version of COVID happening. But for now, I think it looks like things are slowing down for our community. That's that's great. I hope this uh, this uh, tendencies continue, and I hope that more, uh, especially parents, is in their hands now to vaccinate their kids because uh, that twelve percent of the population non vaccinated. It's a large number of these kids between five to seven, five to eleven, and kids that are under five years of age. Definitely. Remember that little kids can also get COVID, and although they cannot, probably most of them are not going to get sick or badly sick. Some of them do; the majority won't. They can spread uh, the virus to uh, to other people. And also a, a reminder for people who's already vaccinated and boosted, we also can, can catch the, the virus. We are not free from infection. The difference is that we might, may have uh, the majority, may have uh, very mild symptoms or worse, may have no symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. So you don't even know that you have it. And people continue to carry on with, you know, everyone is very enthusiastic. We are enjoying the break from COVID and we're all out and most people is not wearing masks. So you can, you know, bring back COVID, yeah. not even knowing. So, you know, act responsibly. If you're gonna have a very active social life, then get get tested. You can get your test uh, from the government. If you got covidtest.org, you can get uh, another supply. It's only two, two tests. But if you have a health insurance, then you can have a test every month, be reimbursed. I'm doing it now. I'm getting, I'm getting my reimburse, reimbursement sometime. And that gives me the opportunity to, to test twice. Mm -hmm. So that way you feel safe, you feel morally fine also that you are not uh, spreading the virus somewhere else, but uh, you know, still as responsible. Yesterday I was, I was visiting a, a, a very older lady friend of mine and she was needing help with her computer. I wore my mask all the time. And she asked me, why are you wearing your mask? If you're vaccinated and I'm vaccinated, it's like, well, because I'm, I'm here and there and you're not. You're here in, in your mm -hmm. house all the time. But I am just from one place to the other, you know, so I, I don't want to get you sick. And, uh, you know, it's not that I'm doing, uh, use my example as a lead, but it's, I'm just referring just to act responsibly. That mm -hmm. is, this is not only about me, this is about us. And that that's the focus that uh, that we need to uh, continue insisting on this. We we live in society. We need to behave as we are in a society, not not individually. Definitely, yeah. Which is a little bit challenging sometimes yeah. for some of our community members. And again, with that, I want to thank you as always, and we'll see what direction we take, whether or not as uh, we continue to do an update every week, every two weeks. The hope is that eventually you'll be able to take some time off at 5 p.m. on Thursdays <laughs> and not have to be here. But for now, um, you know, we'll talk off the air and, and come up with something in the next couple of weeks. So thank we you. For this. So. Thank, thank you. you. A nice weekend to you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.